too late, too late. Sorry, Mike. My apologies. Don't go live. I need to tell you something. So he goes live. Ah, <laughs> I, I'd already pressed the button by then. Yeah, um, any excuse. Hello, guys. How you doing? Right, time out. Yeah, no. Time out. My old man is fine. Um, I had to run up to Grimsby just to see if he was okay. And it went from him potentially having a stroke to uh, he's fine. He's effectively pulled a muscle so bad he can't walk without a Zimmer frame. So uh, <laughs> that was that was my weekend. But I got to see Sam for two seconds, told him off because he actually... Uh, do you know what, Mike? Do you know what Sam did when I, know I what saw him? When you've said you've seen him for two seconds, what Sam's done is what he does whenever I see him at a game. Oh, hello, mate. Yeah, yeah, I'm just on my way. And then, you know, he's out the door. He goes. No, he acknowledged my existence. And then I oh got whisked God. into the cut. And then I got whisked into the club shop, uh, which I haven't been back, into forever. You? For, you, for this perceived, but it's only because I've not been at games. I've not been ignoring. I've just not been there. Ah, there's a, there's a I went buying things. I went buying things in the club shop. Do you know the the the, the, the best best excuse he gave me for? Oh, I did come and see you. Is when was it Slough? And I was actually stood at the Weather Spoons near the door. And he said, "Well, I came over. I said you was on your way out. You had to walk past me." Hi, Jack. <laughs> I got a town shirt. Don't That's nice. I don't, really, I, I don't really know why I want memories of this year, but there we go. Well, well I, got, I'm I'm up next. I'm up next week. Do you want to hear a funny story from last time I went in the club shop? Go ahead. I went in to go and get my little lad um, a town top, um, and we're looking round, and the woman comes over, bless her, says, um, "Sir, we've got we've got some bigger sizes in the back if you're looking for a shirt." Hey, Mighty, take that shirt off. <laughs> I was like, I was like, "Is only three? <laughs> Oh, you, you mean you, sir, don't you? Yeah, it's poor Mike. He's having his shirt ripped off his back to sell it to you, Mike. Don't worry. I've gone down at least a couple of Excels, which is nice. Um, good thing, good thing for you going up, though. You've got to use that this new drone that we've got. Yeah, do you want me to? Got. Let's do this. Everyone can enjoy it. And now, apparently, we can do video files. So unless you start feeling seasick, which I think you started to have that last week, didn't you, Mike, when we used the other one? So if you... I was, I went I was for just the... comic effect, mate. That was all it was. But I will turn if not, I'll I'll remove everyone so everyone can look for a sec. Pretty, ain't it? Beautiful. Yeah, it's very pretty. The, the pitch <laughs> Six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yeah, we um, we all we all woke up Saturday morning to a couple of video messages in the WhatsApp uh, from about six o'clock in the morning. Shall I tell you what? Um Shall I tell you what I do? Did like, you get the I'll sun rising my... over the stand or anything, anything professional like well, that? Or you just go round in a circle coming, really slowly. Coming, coming to a uh, Etsy shop near you. I'm trying to work them out. Where's that? Where's what? Yeah, my what stage is. Yeah, I like this one though. <laughs> yeah, do you know what? I put that up All on Bruce. My initial when you said when you said. My initial reaction to that when you put it in the chat, Bruce, was, not, not, was, was bloody hell, the roof's dirty. That was my reaction, really. Look at it. I like that one. You can start put. Maybe we should sell this as like a tactic board. So for those shirt. listening, that's that we've just seen. Oh, yeah, I forgot we also do a podcast as yeah, well, don't we? Where most people most people actually listen. And now Alex has just pulled up an A3 picture of, um, of the Blundell Park pitch. Now, if he's a Colchester fan, you could do that in A5. A5? Oh, yeah, because, yeah, yeah. The, it's a smaller pitch. Now, that was very good. I like that it one. It was actually. subtle. It was good. It was subtle. We can but judge as people's gardens. Out the, that, as you pointed out, the pitch is bonkers. Yeah. Do, do you know what? I don't think you can make it out on this. So I've done my I did my best. to. So the, the stand is straight, okay? The pitch, on the other hand, is not. Is this is this like a Russell Slade PowerPoint on Humberside, what we're doing now? It, it is, yeah. Good evening, everybody. Um, it was lovely to go up, and thank you. I got to see so many of you. That was quite nice. I got to see Brian Laws, and I uh, wimped out on giving bottled him it. a... Uh, yeah, I bottled it. Giving bottled him a it. sticker that... We've got a sticker of, you know, of Brian Laws and Ivano Vanetti warmly shaking each other's hand again. Um, and I didn't give him it. I'm really sorry. Who else did I see? Aidan Davison. Aidan Davison was in the house. You got to see me for uh, three seconds. Before you went I to got to see shop. you. I, and into hospitality, my darling. I shouldn't have been in there. I felt well did, out of place. Did, did you see anything dodgy in those back gardens or anybody's upstairs windows when you were going around with that drone? Uh, no, it was too early and it was bloody freezing. 
Uh, I have not missed the wind. Um, and what else did we do? Uh, who else did I see? Saw uh, Dave Boylan, which was lovely. Saw Craig Disley. He was in the house. Yeah, he was in the press box yesterday. yesterday. Oh, was he? Oh, he's, it was great to see him. He was, yeah. And thank you. With his, with his lad. But you could tell, we could just tell he was his lad by looking at him. How? I do. They had the same nose and the same hair and the same hair colour. He was he was telling the midfield what to do from the main stand. <laughs> That's how. Um, and a forty-five-year-old yeah. Diz would have been a better footballer in terms of passing the ball to most our midfielders. Was was he um, just itching to make those late runs into the box for a little Disley header from like the penalty spot like he used to? It's a bit big. I, I don't know Diz. if it's, it might be too big no, for I me. This. Diz. Try it on live. That'd be great for a podcast. Yeah, what? You, yeah, who, who doesn't want to see me? We'll just describe what we're seeing. Yeah, it looks like um, ah. that scene with Leia in the <laughs> in her golden bikini. <laughs> um, I forgot what we got on underneath this. Oh, it was just a shirt. Titanic recreation on DN35. Titanic recreation. What? They, we could have both fit on that board. Paint me like one of your French girls. You know who I blame? The French girls. Well, who are all these French girls doing stuff? It's a film out of the Titanic, isn't it? It's, it's the line out the Titanic. Yeah. I'm trying this on, so anyone who's not watching. It's just um, smashed half the studio up already. What did I drop? Oh, I don't know. Um, yeah, the lighting is really weird. It? Isn't it? How cheap was it? Uh, it's 20 it's quid? Rubbish and, you, and, you moaned, and you moaned about the shirt from the word go. You, you brought out this theory, shit shirt, shit season. It is shit shirt, shit season. I can't say it. That's that's a right tongue twister, isn't it? Try and say that after a couple of drinks. Shit shirt, shit season. Shit um, shirt, shit season. I, I do like that he's got stripes on the back, but, you know, I, I assume what, stripes are really expensive. you've got on your chin? What's Look at that? your chin now. Look at your chin now. No, that's just probably grey hair. Oh, no, it's cotton. What, about five foot long grey hair? Looking Gandalf. <laughs> Well, how is everybody? I don't really. It's nice, but I don't really want to wear it. Boy. Oh, no. It's pop stuff. <laughs> Look, I'll wear it to Colchester, all right? Oh, my God. The static that came off that. <laughs> Does that come I'm with... Not, is I'm, that... I'm not looking forward to that night at Colchester. There's a, there's a horrific possibility that, that could be a truly kind of shit or bust affair if things carry on as that. No, nah, the worst one will be Crawley. Ah. But when Danilo Orsi the... sends us down. Yeah. Um, yeah, that could be it. Uh, but how's everybody else? I, I can't really talk. Like, Alex went to Grimsby. It's a Grimsby Town podcast. That should be more of a regular occurrence than once a year. Uh... No, I'm, I'm going up there next week. I'm looking forward to that. I had um, um, I had fish, fish and chips in the Golden Fry. They weren't great. Sorry. I'm, I'm booked in at Steel's, the only place to be going. I'm booked in there for Friday. Very nice. What were you saying, Sam? Sorry, before I cru cruelly interrupted yeah. you. I'm back going to games after my after my mini hiatus for various reasons. So the part time and we lost the from you two can stop. Yeah, the the, the part time support slander from you two can stop. Um, can, you, can I point out whilst I've been going, results have been good. You've stopped going. It's turned round. You've gone back. We've lost. Should I tell you yeah. something as well? I went looking for Bruce at half time. Couldn't find him. Look down where he usually sits. Wasn't there? I don't think wasn't he goes. there. I don't. No, think so I, I, I can I usually I can usually point him out by based on his. I can usually spot him from the main stand. Work out. Work out. I couldn't see him yesterday. Hannah was spying on me. She sent me pictures of me just watching me lonely stood on the side of the upper barrier. Yeah, I was trying to make out where you were. I could I could pick out my cousin, but I couldn't pick out you. <laughs> well, there we go. It was. It was... Should we get into it? Do you know what? I'm really sorry. I feel a bit spacey. I only arrived back like an hour ago. Um, uh, let's have a look. We should be back in, what is it, 56 seconds? Is that all good? Or have we got Tied any it, more? Mate, I'll be honest. I'll, I'll oh, go it gives it. me the time. Open wide for some soccer! And now the shipping forecast issued by the Met Office on behalf of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency at 1130. Go! Double one three oh. I don't think I've ever wanted to be on a stand more than my life around here. They're going crazy. 
10. They got penalty here. They've been fish flying about her. There's no tomorrow. What a magnificent piece of football! A really, really good job. You can't make this break like that. We got gremlins. It was breaking up for me. Oh, it's it's fine right. for me. oh brilliant! Well, I have where Bruce was yesterday. He's probably where if he's he? looking from half time. He's probably outside trying to sell some laptops out of a car boot. That's true, and we like his capitalistic endeavour as a result. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the DM Thirty Five Podcast. Uh, we are here to give you um, respite uh, from the mundanity that is this season. Uh, and hopefully mundanity is all it will be, as uh, we had Colchester beating Mansfield. Is that right? Please tell me, because I can't remember. No, it's a draw. 1-1. Uh, one, one. A Sutton won. Yeah, 3-1. Yeah. Accrington. Against Accrington. And then Forest Green drew. Is that right? No, they lost 2-0 at Donny. Aye, doing brilliantly. Um, well, so that they? means, yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm we across We do it. a lot of prep, don't we? <laughs> Didn't even... Put so the link set, set, into set, the set, half an hour ago. <laughs> essentially, we're just as close to the bottom two as we were before kickoff, and we're one game close to home. So that's a weekend. very, very good way of thinking about it, Sam. I'm very impressed with that. That's a good way of doing it. Let's, I've, let's I've think of it like that. Positive mental attitude is my new favourite hobby. <laughs> well, well, it's very simple, isn't it? If you're happy on Friday with where we were, you should still be happy now because it's exactly I mean, the same. I'm not technically happy with where we are. But I meant relatively um, speaking. Yeah, yeah. There are there are worse places we can be. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember our pre our pre season Twitter space where I predicted we get we'd have we'd have a proper playoff run and finish sixth or seventh. Yeah, I'm really happy. Ed, what I think you actually said HMS week. piss the league several times, didn't you? I Which I don't I understand. Couple, I had a couple of drinks when I did that. Um, if we had, um, if we were still, you know, the fishing empire of the world, do you think at some point in the in you know the recent past we would have named a trawler piss the league? What, a Just kind so of like that... a boat him at boat face kind of hijacking of some kind of vote for a name? Um... Yeah, exactly. Just imagine, I, I, you know, I could foresee town, some kind of town fans someone... voting it. Some local councillor is some sort of kind of electoral, um, some kind of electoral stunt put like there's this new trawler. We're going to put the name of it to a vote, and that's what gets to like, I can easily foresee that those that sort of, that sort could, of circumstances manifest. Another one, themselves. yeah. We could name one Tommy Forecast and it hits the harbour wall and sinks and blocking everybody else in. Make uh, that one green. <laughs> Oh, well, there we go. Um, it is great to see you all. Town have played a game since we last saw each other. We lost to Wrexham. Um, I was there. Sam was there. Mike watched on telly. Um, so we can all have a chat about what we thought of it. I didn't think too much, really. It was nice to be there. Um, but um, they were quicker, faster, stronger. And I felt very much like it was the Stockport game where they were 3-0 up and went, well, this is a load of, this is pretty easy. Let's just go into second gear and just keep them at arm's length. And then if we need to turn it on again, we can do. They just seem to be efficient. They weren't incredible, but, you know, we're in Division 4. They don't need to be incredible. They just need to be proficient and ruthless and take their chances when they come. And they did. And that was all I really thought of it. I just thought, you know, um, it doesn't, I'm not, I'm not angry, disappointed. I didn't expect anything. I don't think many did. We didn't get anything. Um, at least it wasn't a complete shellacking, which meant, you know, goal difference might well become important and it is starting to be chipped away at. Um, so, you know, nice goal by Arthur. Um, what's up? Goal difference is exactly the same, plus or minus, from Friday. What, for us or for everybody else? Well, the, 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 difference, well. the difference. Forest Green lost by two goals. But it's still, you know, what? how many were different from Colchester, though? It is reducing slightly as time goes on, is it not? Yeah, but it's been getting better in recently relative to most of it. it, it it's not like when we're shipping five every week and we were, 
and it was getting chips away at. But let me just get the league table up. We would have lost. Hang on, Mike. We would have consi- We'd have lost goals to Colchester, who didn't lose. Yeah, I was sort of looking. I'm I'm looking at the at the relegation zone. To be fair, mate, I've sort of fine. I, I'd brushed over Colchester. If, if Sutton or Forest Green catches, then in all likelihood Colchester will as well. So you have to kind of take them out of the equation. I, I think, but yeah, just, our goal difference is our goal difference is still to, ten to, better to, than to help my argument take them out of the equation. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I <laughs> they don't exist as we all would like. They don't exist, so it's no. nothing to worry about. <laughs> did you but watch they... the Mansfield Colchester game, Mike? Given it was on the telly and before the, the town game, or did you have better things yeah. to do than subject yourself to that? Oh my god! Yeah, did I did. Watching... Um... So hang on, you watched a Division Four game of football recreationally. I'm a very count. sad individual. It was a long trip to Bordeaux. I had it on, you know, on the iPad. <laughs> Those TVGs don't go as fast as they used to, do they? Yeah. I think Colchester. Colchester. I did watch the game. Colchester were decent. I, I don't know how much of that's to do with how bad Mansfield were for a big portion of that game. And I think Mansfield probably should have won that. But Colchester definitely looked like they're a team that could get a few results together. But um, they've got a lot of games in a short amount of time. I think they're every three or four days now to the end of the season. So um, I don't know in terms of, I don't know if you want to go first uh, about yesterday, Sam, because you was there. Oh, um, yeah. And um, I, I agree with everything Alex said about it. Oh. Um, yeah, I, 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 I've lost my thread. I, I agree with everything Alex said about the, um, about the game. Meh was my overwhelming reaction to it. We, they were better than we were, basically one to eleven. Um, I didn't expect much going into the game. We didn't get. I, I kind of so when the third goal went in, I kind of said, "Well, here we go. The objective once again is to avoid a cricket score." We succeeded in that, I guess. I mean, you're kind of clutching the straws there a little bit, but the sooner they get out of this league with their massive budget, the better. I mean, you could just tell the quality of their firepower. I mean, Mullen, Connor, Palmer, Lee—they're just on a different stratosphere to our, to our players and. Fletcher to bring off the bench for God's sake, and I they mean, were missing James McLean. Yeah, and the, the, <laughs> the, um, and what did we have? We, 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 I mean, their keepers made no saves of note. The Arthur's made a good strike. Um, I think the first goal. If you look at the goals, I think Gav was shy in the build up to the first goal. He's given the ball away twice in his opportunities to clear it, um, and then the keeper should do better. It, it, it uh, from my position in the main stand, I wasn't really. Um, look, thinking that's particularly nasty, and it's resulted in the goal. Second goal, just and apart from the fact someone's Malarkey's got to foul Mullen in the build up and take the yellow card. Um, after that, it's just a bit of quality sort of play that you, you'd, you'd see Manchester United or, or um, Manchester United or Tottenham produce. Uh, it was really high quality counter attacking stuff, and the, the third goal is a quality striker's finish as well. Um, although the third goal comes from a bit of kind of powder puff defended by Green, I thought. Um, you talk talk about Kieran Green if you if you want to. Um, if you can't sort of clear a ball properly, I don't really see what the point of that bloke is. But that's a that's a different discussion. I'm not disheartened. The next, I don't see us getting much from Barrow on when on Friday on Friday because they're at the top of the form table. But then we're at home to Bradford on good good Easter Monday and well. It's about time we beat them, isn't it? And we probably will need to. So Sam's back, slagging everybody off. Kieran Green, don't see the point. Uh, you know, Gav Holohan. We're already talking about Bradford. We're already talking yeah. about Bradford. Yeah. I don't know. I think that you've been unfair on Green. He's had a pretty decent, good couple of games at the moment. And, you know, I don't think he was any worse or better than anybody else. I thought Thompson was okay, but it yeah. felt to me like Thompson was almost man-marking Lee, which allowed extra space from everyone else and more people had to cover ground than they usually do. Um, but, you know, where where else do you go? I agree with you that, you know, I thought there was a foul at the beginning of that corner with that counter-attack, but it, there wasn't. He just got out-muscled. Yeah. Uh, was it Donovan Wilson, was it, that got out-muscled? Yeah. And um, the story of our story of the game, really. Um, and <laughs> they, they, they put it away emphatically. We had more of the ball, but, you know, we just looked nervous in comparison first touch was heavy you know or the passing wasn't very slick and um we just it was just slow plodding sort of football that you expect from a team who are very nervous and i've got to say i don't think the fans helped it doesn't help that we go down five you know 
Um, I would love, I'd love, love Bruce came here because we were having a chat with it on the WhatsApp group and he was against me on it. So it'd have been good to wear it. But um, I know it doesn't help. We concede, you know, after five minutes, but the moaning and the groaning, every misplaced pass after, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, after you're on a windless, you know, no, no defeat in six. It doesn't feel very much like we're, you know, it doesn't feel the same that we would do when, you know, when we played Chesterfield with that big wall of music in the corner and um, we were all in it together and all that sort of stuff. It doesn't feel like we've got that sort of mentality off off the pitch at the moment, uh, which we might need to because we're not we're not out of this yet. What do you think, mate? Um, it, 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 it's one of them, isn't it? I, I sort of heading into the game, I was um, pretty convinced we weren't going to get anything. So I, I, I find it difficult to get myself wound up. I think it's very clear to see before the game, um, but even clearer after the game, how much golfing class uh, and just ability and quality there is, uh, as well as depth. I mean, it's, you don't need us to tell you how, how good Wrexham are and how much money they've spent. So it's not surprising a team that's now second. Um, I thought I thought Sam might be a bit harsh from my angle watching on the telly. It looked like that first goal had a wicked bounce. Um, I don't see how a keeper goes all the way down and it bounced on the six yard line and bounced over him. So I think it's a bit of an unfair bounce on him, if I'm honest. Second goal, you know, we we lost the ball on the edge of their box. Should should do more to keep hold of it. I I, I don't think it's a foul, but I think it's one you get as a defensive team all day long. Um, we need to need to do better to to stop the counter attack, and that's something we've spoken about before. We had that um, against Stockport, didn't we? Um, but then when we've not stopped it, I think something Artel said before about trying to overcommit and overcompensate when you're when you're trying to sort of stop a transition or or stop a stop a chance on goal and overrunning things. Thompson dropped back far too far running back and played played their lad on side. I went back and looked at it. Now if Thompson just doesn't overcommit and it's not a criticism for him because you know he's trying his hardest to get back into position. He could just hold his run a little bit that, that passes to an an offside player. So it's just, you know, linking back to what Artel said about that. Maybe it's just over keen. Um and the third goal I I can't really remember Green doing anything wrong, to be honest. Sam, I think Tham, Tham had a chance to clear it. Um, and I think he's been solid since he's come in and he had a fairly solid game yesterday. Oh, and you're I not criticising Tham, are you, Sam? This could go wrong. No, no, no. The ball's no, I think... no, no, the ball's no I think he had a chance to clear it. Side. And there's I don't, I don't think it's clearance. I don't think it's a shooting. I don't think it's a shooting problem. I think, you know, you said if you want them to be clearing that ball, he didn't, and it was a great finish. So it's not the end of the world. Yes, yeah, certainly because of quality. I, it's a quality you know, I, I, I struggle to see see that they did much else. Now, obviously, after they scored the third, they don't really have to do they. So I take that point. But after the first goal, I thought without being amazing and without being good enough to write home about, I think we did OK in terms of keeping hold of the ball, staying in the game, um, keeping possession and getting up the pitch a bit better. We lacked that that cutting edge up front, which you could probably put down to somebody like Rose not being there or having any of those attacking wingers on. The way we're set up at the minute is very solid, but we do miss a bit of creativity. Um, and then those two goals just before half time has absolutely killed us. I think if we can get in there one nil or even two nil, I think there's a chance we could have come out and had another go, but the game was dead at three nil. Now I think six weeks ago we'd have lost that four, five, or six. So I think there's something to take from the response at half time, the response in the second half, and getting a goal back. Now that's it's not going to keep you up, but I think it. It's a telltale sign looking at it about how this team is stronger and is better um, than it than it was six weeks ago. Well, um, I agree with you that the kind of we with the two goals just for time are a bit of killers. I, but I, I would also counteract with that you always felt they had another gear, and if we had equalised at any stage, I suspect they could have upped it and um, and taken the game away from us if they'd really needed to. Um, I, I, um, yeah. The, I don't know about, I, I thought there were a couple of little things that I thought maybe were a little bit worrying. I thought Rogers regressed to his pre Morecambe self yesterday. And my slight concern is, without wishing to kind of catastrophize it, is that this kind of sets us back mentally. We've lost a game. Here we go again. I don't, I hope that doesn't happen. But we Sam's kind of called us to... shite. <laughs> Pointless. <laughs> That's not, I did not say that at all. That's not, hang what on. I said. He did, didn't he, Mike? Um, you're f- fixing your microphone, so you know. Yes, he He's did a- say that. Is my microphone oh. now fixed? A lot better. It sounds better. 
I did not say we were shite. I said that I thought Rodgers... No, you said Gav was shite. Yeah, I said Gav was shite. But <laughs> he, 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 and I thought he was shite against Milton Keynes as well. I think he's been poor for weeks. Um, but... Um, I think but, that's um, harsh. Just going to say. No, he's been poor for weeks. Um, I think he's a player who's kind of become... Really? When he'd been left out the side for um, I didn't see the game at Gillingham, admittedly, so I'm willing to but but I saw. I thought he was. Fi- I, I thought he's been fine. No, I thought. He'd been I, th- I think he's had a had a massive hand in two or three goals and been fairly solid without the ball. He's probably had an issue with the ball. You're right, but I, I think looking at the seven games we've just been on, a lot of the the good bits that that we've done have been without the ball, um, and I think I think that goes overlooked. And building on what you said about we're set up, I mean, with Harriet right wing back and Gavin Green in midfield, we're not going to be able to kind of manipulate the ball and take the ball on the half turn and take and sort of play defence splitting passes. But that's not the game. The aim of the game at the moment is it. We're trying to kind of be solid, stay in games enough, and kind of sort of how do you put this kind of grind out enough points using sort of grit, resilience, and battle to stay up, and then we can perhaps in the summer look at signing some more ball players. These are these are sofa scores match ratings for Gav. I would go on the fishy, but I can't find it. Uh, so we'll start with Forest Green. He got seven point one in the Morecambe game before it. Six point eight, six point seven. Sutton seven point nine. MK Don six point three. So that's kind of you know supporting your theory, Sam. Gillingham seven point six, and then six point five yesterday, which is the average for most of them actually. The the, M- um, the MK Don and two assists. Is a bit of- the MK Dons game is probably a bit of a, a dodgy one because we had 20% possession <clears> of the ball. And Andy missing, missing a penalty won't do his, his rating any good. Yeah, that's no. true. That will be true. Yeah, that's true. But no, I think his inclusion has been, you know, much needed. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get on nah, to the it's probably, it's, the it's probably me overcorrecting on the grounds that if I thought everybody decided he was a world beater when he got dropped out of the side and I'm kind of... <laughs> Providing ultra balance on the other side in a kind of Misha, the new Misha Fetty in reverse. Oh, well, that's fine. Well, you know, how it's a good question, actually. We haven't totally spoken much. How are you finding an, an a Fetty less Grimsby town? And well, are you dealing got, with it well? I've just got over the Hurstless town and then they dropped that one off on me, didn't they? <laughs> Do you want this? I'll give you this if you need it. Oh, that's brilliant. Oh, yeah, can I have that for Christmas? That's, that's fantastic. I have oh, no idea where I'm... Leanne nicked it from, but she got it printed. So apologies. Yeah, that was a picture of a fete, by the way. Just Yeah. No, yeah. So <laughs> let's have a quick look through what people are saying. Um, Square Eye says, are, are we excited for Chesterfield next season? If we're here, yeah, that'll be good. Um, Bruce was there with a week's supply of hot dogs, says Andrew Niles. Um, also says, apart from Thompson, they were better in every position. Uh, just, uh, just coming back from Mike's, um, you know, enjoyably watching a Colchester Mansfield game, saying Colchester was good, um, and then comes back and says, in terms of Wrexham, they let us have the ball sixty forty with their quality players up front. They can play with two defensive midfielders. We couldn't create anything, and Wrexham got bigger chances on counter attacks. Uh, Grimbo says Mullin was being a prick as per usual. I thought it was pretty, you know. You know, he was all right. I thought he wasn't too bad. He he went down randomly towards the end of the game for no particular reason, um, which is why people do. Um, um, may or may not have put his elbow in his face. Really? Did he really do I it? Don't, I I don't think I don't think it was an intentional one or any with any great um uh, great power behind it. But there was definitely a, a sh- shugging of him off. And by the way, I'm 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 all for. That, um, that I'm running up to him every time he's on the floor and just screaming at him to get up in his face. I'm all for that. Good. Serves yeah. him right. Uh, just said, well, we won't see him much after this, will we? Will we? Uh, Josh says, uh, we rarely turn the ball sideways and create rooms, often getting stuck in the middle. I thought one thing that we were really, Harry, Harry's pretty good at right back, but it felt almost like he was told not to go too much further than where he got to, about sort of two thirds of the way into in, up the pitch. And I think we were missing the overlap on that right side at times when we had an opportunity to push. Um, and I assumed he would have been the guy that was doing it. And, you know, we were, I assume we sacrificed that for defensive st- stability. Tim Hubbard says Gav is uh, maybe still thinking about that miss at Morecambe. He provided a good assist at Gillingham, but he's not delivering much else in my honest opinion. I think he's got the leadership though, Tim. I think him and Thompson, and, you know, you know, a other are doing pretty well in the middle of the park. I've got, it feels very Paul Hurst like at the moment in terms of, you know, graft and determination. Just get out, get get us out of it. 
um, and then we can look at changing it up. It's an interesting question because I mean, if you if you're going back to how Artel historically wants to play and how he's tried to play with us, then then you'd imagine Gav at his age is is maybe is maybe going to be a bit part player in that. But the way we've been playing recently um, and the need to to dig in, um, be good without the ball, um, keep some defensive shape, um, then he's the sort of player you want in there. And I I do think sometimes when you when you're a midfielder and it's and you've not been scoring four or five a game and it's one nils nil nils, I, I I think we do tend to overlook how vital it is to be strong in midfield when we've had the problems we've had because don't forget, seven games ago we were getting absolutely carved apart straight through the middle. You know Thompson's obviously got a big say in that and obviously the change of formation has as well. But I do think Gav probably comes in for a bit of stick um, for his ability on the ball, which is fair. But I do think we we underplay how good he's been off the ball. May I make the most obvious point in the world and get points for it? Uh, we missed Danny Rose yesterday. Oh, 100%. Yeah, thank you very much. I, I, you know, some people really overlook my, t- uh, you know, tactical astuteness. Um, and uh, it's comments like that that show exactly, I understand what's going on. And um, I'm not just there looking at the pretty colours. And w- my Marin on them. Mighty Mariner on a mobility scooter at one point, um, which um, I noticed, which made me laugh for a moment. And then Wrexham scored. <laughs> a true Grimsby Tech. You do know Wrexham hadn't won back-to-back away games since uh, last March until yesterday, don't you? Well, so we're here to help. In the second in league, you know, you're not, you're not second in league with Stockport, MK Dons, um, and other field. teams. Uh, and Mansfield <laughs> Yeah, you're That's not second in league without being a very good team. You know, let, let's just you know they are a very very good team with a lot of resources. No, I'm just saying, and very I, Grimsby. Town I don't think they. And there was a gap in quality. I don't think it was as much as I thought it would have been because I'd have seen us again two months ago. I could have seen that being four, five, six, seven. Honestly. Yeah, I think you're yeah, probably I, right. I, I was certainly worried when the third one went in that it would t- be a kind of oh, here we go again, but. I mean, we're placing them for digging in. We're potentially uh, losing a couple of decent away games next season, then, aren't we? You know, Mansfield and Stockport are going. They're pretty easy for those of you in Groomsby to get to. Um, you know, Wrexham's not easy particularly, but, you know, we're losing that. That's quite, you know, an interesting game to get we're losing them. Counter that, that decent one, though, isn't it? But counteract that we're losing yeah. two of Forest Green, Colchester, and Sutton, and you can't find three more inaccessible places from Grimsby than those three. I yeah, but I'm not. Should. I'm not thinking of that that way, are we, mate? We're we're yeah. thinking, you know, this that's easy for poor Mike is desperate for Sutton to stay up. Can I just say they are very accessible? And a little fist bump may have come in when I saw Sutton go above Forest Green Rovers. I said, <laughs> I said to somebody of the week, I, I think, I think Forest, um, Forest Green and Colchester going down and Sutton staying up is a little bit underpriced. Like that's happened because Sutton's an awful lot easier than Forest Green and Forest Green and Colchester, but um, and, and the sides coming down. If you look at the sides coming down, you're saying like, it's the shittiest set of sides. I think it's Fleetwood, Cheltenham, yeah. Carlisle. Oh, well. Let's stay up Paul first, Hale. lads. Eh? Let, let's let's stay. stay so, I think say you stay up. Can you find <laughs> four worse away days than those four? I mean, I've not been. I've never been to Carlisle, but because it's, so, yeah, it's never quite. Um. But the other three, I mean, ugh, yeah, I'll have a day off and do something else when we're away at those three. Yeah, well, let's be honest, Sam, by that time, if we're here next season, you'll have a few days off by then. Hopefully um, Barnet come up, that'd be good. <laughs> yeah, Barnet's a good one. Barnet would be nice. Um, did you, um, we're, we're already scrambling around for content. Did you see uh, Dawkins' manager's response to their 6-0 defeat to Barnet? So you'll not see any of them. Box office. You will not see just, any of them again. I just love how spectacularly out of his depth Mark White is as a purported professional football manager and therefore resorts to just kind of these fantastically honest and open interviews where he just slags off his players every single week. It, it, maybe it's a, it's maybe a, at the level he's at. Maybe at the level he's at, Sam, but I think, I think he's proven for what he's done with them that he's pretty decent at, at lower league football. Um, maybe... That is a bigger, too big a level for him, but um, he's quite refreshing. 
What's it? What's that oh, lad, Alfie? What's his name that he threw under the bus? And he had two ACL injuries and a heart operation. And he's been yeah, back he's like a month. Operation. I thought that's a bit harsh. He's had a heart operation, yeah. His heart's on his ass. Um, so, um, are we? Are we? Can I ask you a question as well? Do you think Swindon could still be pulled into it? Five points above us. They've lost three games on the trot. I said, I said the other week they're they're in a bit of trouble, but I think they're they're four, they're they're three or four points better than than where they where they would be if they were going to get in trouble. I think you're asking Forest Green or Sutton to do an awful lot to claw back eleven points in what eight games. That's that's yeah. that's a huge amount. But I think they, you know, if that run had started a couple of weeks previous, they'd be bang in trouble. I definitely think we can catch them. Definitely, Swindon. Swindon, Notts County, both of them. If the season was a a, a month longer, I think would be in trouble. But um, I mean Swindon, if you because they they're both their best players. Um, what's he called? Kemp is it or Kent? The, the, the winger who was on yeah, loan Kemp. partly for the second half. Kemp, yeah. Um, and Young from, who was on both of them. Run Young was on loan from Bradford and Kemp was on loan from Milton Keynes. Were their best two players in the first mm. half of the season. And since then they've gone rubbish. And uh, not to count say almost they lost Williams and they've kind of the wheels have come off there spectacularly. Um, Ain't Swindon I, got Mad Gav? They have got Mad Gav, yeah. Yeah, they might be in a bit of trouble, Anthony. I'm, I'm going to reframe. <laughs> That's the man you want in a crisis. It's a cool, calm head of Gavin Gunning to he help you through those he times. Master, masterminded a 5-0 win against us last season, didn't he? I'll be entirely honest. It doesn't take much to mastermind a, a, a victory over us, let's be honest. Last um, season it did. We were, we were out to beat. Wasn't it just... Lose that many. Doesn't he just Charlie Austin up front and put the ball to him last season? Yeah, that's basically. Yeah. I think that was. I think that was how it worked. Yeah, it was um, yeah. quite and, clever. And Danny Amos got himself sent off, uh, which didn't help matters. 15, 20 minutes in, it was. Um, and the referee got knocked out, which was even more yes. entertaining. It was all going off, uh, wasn't it? It was. Um, yeah. The only thing I, I, I keep saying it. I think the one thing I do like about Swindon because I've been a lot of times now. Um, is the symmetry between Swindon Town and Grimsby Town on their little board, their sports scoreboard. It matches perfectly. It's fairly it's quite nice. nice. I, I never like looking at the scoreboard when I'm at Swindon because our record there is genuinely terrible. But I oh, I don't know about... No, that's not true. We I remember a, a famous win under Michael Jolly where it was oh, the most... The worst, the worst penalty ever when Harry Cardwell was not... He could have been killed. Uh, mate, he could have no, been killed. I think you'll find that injury... Put Harry Cardwell back quite a lot. I think you that need was to be a little bit more respectful. Yeah, that was terrible. That was, that, our, was. that was our old friend, Mr. Brooks. That was the bloke who gave that terrible decision to Altrincham. That you know, in the, in the conference season when the ball was not over the line, he gave a goal. That bloke's now a Premier League referee, which tells you all you need to know about the problems in this. Country. Is he really? He is. Yeah. It's all the problems with this country, says Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I do think, in fairness, that that challenge on Cardwell was was it Cardwell or Keen Rose that got challenged? One of those Cardwell. It was um, it was Cardwell, Cardwell and it, was it Mitch yeah. Rose that then put the pe penalty away? So, well, I thought he was yeah, a, he was a Keen, but it was Mitch that scored the penalty. I think I think what we're saying is that the challenge was so bad, it was outside the box. But what the referee said is, it's so bad, I'm going to give you an extra extra five yards <laughs> and make it a penalty. Cardwell died. It was a shocking decision. <laughs> Wasn't even in the box. Could have been killed. Could have killed him. Yeah. That's where we used up all of our luck uh, on that one game. Along to, uh, yeah, and then we got a little bit more in the in the little meter in the luck meter, and then Daniela also says, "Right, I'm going to use it at Southampton, which is not a bad place to use it." Um, and so, no, um, but, but, but when Daniela also scores the winner against us for Crawley, we're going to be regretting that moment, aren't we? When we could do it with in reverse. <laughs> so, so Barrow on Friday, are we advising everybody not to go to Weatherspoons? No, 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 do it. It'd be you think of the lawsuit. Uh, right, but so Brian <laughs> Brian Calladine's come back and says Swindon's next three games are Notts County, Sutton, and Barrow before they play us. So that's a mix of you know teams. So that's not an easy running, really. Sutton are Swindon, fighting for their lives. Swindon Notts County. That's a um that that, that Swindon play Notts County. <laughs> They're two sides who are horrendously out of form. And what I will say about Barrow. Is I've not paid great attention to them, and they're, they're doing all right in the form table, and they're doing all right in the league table. But every time I seem to see a result, it's been a bad one for them. Yeah. So I don't I'm think. 
Oh, next two they're games, doing all right in the form table. It's just every time I see their result, it's a loss. But they've probably not looked for the next three weeks and they've won three. But um, so I don't think um, I don't think they'll they'll cause us the same amount of problems as a team like Wrexham do. So I, you know, I want to go there and get three points possibly. I think if we get three, if we get six points over Easter, I think that's it done, chaps. What I would say is, is that Bradford, not the Bradford, Barrow, um, the game in October, we beat them on a Tuesday night, two one. We can't, it was bizarre, really. It was because we didn't play very well at all, and they were way better than us, and we won. Um, I think it might have been, that was her last victory, actually. Um, but but if, if if that if that performance of the two sides is mirrored again, would do very very well to get a um, a result out. They look way better than us. Um, I think it might have been the last game I saw of win actually. Bloody hell, I do um, need to stop going. Barrow, Mike, for your for your um for your knowledge, had, two had, had, more, had more had more had more have overtaken us on wins by November. Um, so they've already got they already had more wins than we've got all season. Um, they're doing all right, and I think they went six games uh, on the bounce with wins as well. Yeah, um, I'm not saying they're not doing all right. I'm just saying every time I see them, they <laughs> seem to have slipped up. So I, you know, I think I think they've gone some places and lost lost some games to lower league, uh, lower lower down the league. Michael Yarbrough says uh, Stockport Crew uh, and MK Dons are Forest Green's next three games. So this is you know a pivotal part of the season for them and what their playoff uh, what playoff chances what their relegation chances will be. Uh, so Crew obviously you know. So they're I playing f- fifth. Who else are they playing? Sorry, MK Dons fourth and Barrow. So they're playing fourth, fifth, and six. MK Dons are due to turn the team over after their result. You see, you see five five nil yesterday away at Stockport. Stockport. And then Andrew Nile asked the most pertinent question of the lot: Is how many points do you think we will need by uh, to stay up? I think we need forty seven. I think 40, 45, 45, 45 will be enough. It's, 45 it's all relative, it. though, isn't it? You know, one more point yeah. could be enough if the other teams start See. losing. But I think, mm. I, I think you could get you could get to to Tuesday uh, next week, and you could be you know rubbing your hands, packing up. That's that's it done for the season. If we win two and they and they all lose two below us, that's it done. We were almost doing that happen, against then. MK Dons, weren't we? Well, well then well, you, you know if that happens, you're asking them to make twelve points up over seven games. That's just not going to happen. I mean, touch Sutton, got six, but... Sutton have got six six games left. You're asking them to win yeah. four, four and draw what and draw two of the remaining six games to overhaul us if we've got 45 points. That's a point a point per game. A point per game for the rest of the season is is enough. And then we can have a well, I'm not having a party if we stay up, but we can sort of have a, a little kind of just chill for a bit, can't we? I'm just having a sigh on, and a Rose. and a hard drink and then um yeah <laughs> then then the autopsy begins i guess isn't it <laughs> stop stop getting my repeat prescription from the doctor <laughs> um yeah it, it, once we it, once we have the few we've stayed up we can then have the kind of right let's lay into this load of rubbish and see who's responsible for it and and um yeah the first of those the first of those two sort of autopsies i'm going to have over the course of this year well, let's bring up the handy little trick thing that I never, I haven't updated since we had it. There you go. Um, so that's where we were in terms of the running and what. And the after, teams after those three got. games, after those three games you read out that Michael Yarbrough said Forest Green have got, they've then got Mansfield and Wrexham after that. So it doesn't get any better, does it? No, and then they've got more coming. Notts County, Notts County have changed. Obviously, they were in the playoff chances in February, but um... looking at that, Forest Green are in big trouble. And Sutton, Sutton might get out of it. Do, do you I reckon? I think Colchester are going to start having a problem with the amount of games they've got, guys. Uh, they, uh, well, they've they, only, they, but they've uh, only got one more game than us. Yeah, but it's it's there's no free week. It's just Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday. Now we've got a free week in there, um, which which is is quite big. You know, we've got a, got a free week uh, training in there. And as well, there's not the pressure to be winning every game on us. You know, if they get on, if they get on a good run, it's good. You know, they keep playing. But if they if they lose a couple, it's then right. We don't have time to work on anything. We're into the next game. 
Right, Rob Rob deserves. Uh, Rob, you didn't even need to update it because I understood it and I think that was a very good joke. Rob says, if we stay up, I wouldn't want any of our players passing me a pint. It would end up five yards behind me. Uh, so there you go. <laughs> That's quite good. Well done, Rob. <laughs> um, this sounds almost professional, this podcast today. Um, it's, I'll tell you what, it's a good job Bruce isn't here, though. We've been moaning, he's been moaning at the waffle and it started 15 minutes earlier than usual. I've well, got seven yeah. stories I need to tell you in the next ten minutes. Well, remember, the, the, the last pod I was on, we talked about the Wimbledon game and said we'd done Wimbledon, and he'd spent twenty minutes just talking about the pubs he'd been to on the way and the people he'd seen. Didn't talk about the game once. Do you remember that? <laughs> Can you know I we're just doing say... Sam tries when you lose your job? We're going to do Bruce travels as well. <laughs> what you're going to do? What like Carl Pilkington sort of thing? Yeah, travel Bruce diaries. Yeah. yeah, just trying to sell laptops in every different continent. Going. Well, how am I going to use this? It's got a UK plug. It'll be fine. <laughs> it was the bit when he kind of took over and said, right, we've done Wimbledon, haven't we? I thought, no, we haven't. <laughs> My favourite one was when Bruce, when uh, it's not fair because he hasn't got a right to defend himself. He um, he basically hung me out to dry with Peter Hander's side, which was a bit, a bit mean. Are we going to talk about him? We will do. <laughs> yes. You were, slugging me up last, you were slugging me off last week saying I was a part-time supporter in a Joan where I had no right to defend myself. You didn't bother you then, did it? No, well, that's we do true. It when you're here, Sam. We do it when you're here, mate. We do it, you Yeah, know, yeah, part time. Not here or not. Yeah. I'm just trying to think how many games have I done recently? Let's do that, shall we? Because, you know, I think my. um, I'm ticking up what, now, what, aren't I? What I've worked recently? out I'm going to be on 13 at the end of the season. Bloody hell. Which is about the main same, same points we've got. Get, isn't free, it? get free coffee then. Uh, <laughs> so uh, let's have a look. What have I, really what have I done? Sorry. Forest. Uh, no, Forest Green don't count. Sutton. Gillingham, Barrow, basically every other game. I've done quite. I've done all right. No, not, not that anybody cares. Uh, yeah, I would just like to say, which, which of us is going to Barrow on Friday, though? None Are you going? I'm going. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's Easter. It's Easter, isn't it? Yeah, got no, got he's got trying to go to. He's trying to get to. He's trying to get bit. No, he's yeah. trying to go to BAE Submarine. See if he can get a job. <laughs> It's recess, and it, and, it, and it is recess, but contrary to kind of public perception of what's a one-line whip and a three-line whip at the back end of last week. Is that something to do with crosses? I don't want to know what you do when you go to Barrow. That's what you do in your own time is up to you. It's um, yeah. You two, should, you two of all people should know what I'm talking about there. Yeah, well, I, do. <laughs> I want to just say, after being up there for a couple of days, for two days, what a lovely town we actually have. And it's far more interesting. What a lovely town we have, and it's far more interesting than older shot. Um, and uh, a lot more, and absolutely, uh, you know, trying to think of drone places around here, there's nowhere interesting to film. Um, not that you won't get yeah, your shot, down. yeah. Um, and um, you know, the beach was beautiful, lovely weekend, you know, walking on the beach in the morning, you know. So lucky to have it, and um, oh, you yeah. can walk along the sea, and so it's so and um, have a night. Not Jesus, <laughs> well, along the sea, not on it. Oh, <laughs> maybe that's what I'm, Jesus I'm, did. <laughs> I'm, I'm, heading, I'm heading up on uh, I'm heading up on Thursday. I've got I've got ten days in a caravan in Thorpe Park, so I'm really looking forward to it. It's, it's one of these towns. It's not where I'm from, um, but I grew up there. And it's one ten. of these towns that I think you have to be. Sometimes it takes not being there to appreciate how fucking great a town it is, and it really is. I don't buy any of the bullshit that that goes on, you know. It's it is corner. no, it's no rougher, it's no rougher than you know the streets around where I live here in you know no. Hampshire and Surrey. I mean, I'm in, um, I'm in South London. I feel a lot bloody safer in Grimsby. I tell you. Yeah, a lot safer. Than I do anything better. So, I mean, no if one you go stole to my any drone. Town, any, any town in the UK, you go, you go somewhere, you can find a, you can find a rough bit of it yeah, anywhere. It yeah. does kind of. Do you two? Do you two get it? So you kind of like. So I kind of would pitch up in pubs or whatever, and or anywhere around, or people in Parliament see my lanyard with a town it's badge really on it, and kind of go, "Oh, well, the the only thing I know is the film with Sasha Baron Cohen in it, the film that wasn't filmed in yeah. Grimsby at all." Yeah, shut up, Leah. Yeah. Leah, you're our representative. You should know more than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get that. You know, sorry, Sam. It's, it's go, that... go on, go on. Say, no, oh, I, I, I've, I've, I've made my point. I've made my point. It's, was that, it's a, that was that or... a good joke to end it on? Yeah. Great, it's that or fucking fish, isn't it? That's all people know it for. That or fucking yeah. They don't fish. mention. They don't. Come, uh, there was a period actually where a couple of people did come up to me and say, "Oh yeah, you were in the Wrexham documentary," but that's now gone because the second series has come out. 
So I was disappointed in the lack of "We saw you cry on the telly," uh, or "We made you cry on the telly" uh, being sung. That sh- at least something we should have gone. No, they were a little bit obsessed with us yesterday with their singing. It wasn't about how good they were, though. The Welsh national anthem sounded wonderful. Um, uh, they weren't necessarily, w- w- you know, enjoying themselves. They were more taking the mick out of us. But as I said, I guess if we can sign you for another year to play Bromley. I would also be a little bit obsessed with us too. And as I said to you, we need to be careful about that sort of thing because we may well be playing Bromley in league football next season. That'll so. be brilliant. I'll be going. Oh, I'd have that. Yeah. What Woodman, what Woodman is a league manager? I'm going to throw Skittles at him and he'll be picking them up. <laughs> I like him. Taste the rainbow. <laughs> Oh, no, I can't bear the prospect of Bromley being a league club. It is easy to get Can to. I... You, just, you, just, you just want another game, don't you? Let's want to... Yeah. Oh, let's have a look then. Who can call... No, I'll tell you who I want, Sam, and you know full well who I want. I want Aldershot. I Firstly, Tommy Widrington, successful for him. And also then, uh, you know, it's I can just walk up the road. I want Barnet. Best away day. Um, best away That's day only because I arrange nice, funny things for people to do. Yeah. <laughs> Very easy yeah, I've got a to. question for you, Sam. Mm-hmm. Go on. So, b- before we next meet, we've probably got Bauer and Bradford. How many points do you think we'll get? Because we-, we did this with Alex a couple of weeks ago, and he said, like, one or something. I said two, thank you very much. And I was close. We got seven. I said 12. <laughs> How many points yes. have we got, then? When did we? When did you ask me this question? I asked him, it's after Sutton. So you no, said we'd not win another game this season. Then we went and won two. I think I think you said you said two yes, points. Oh. Two points for next. You did the next five games. So the next four games, you said sorry to you. So Milton Keynes, uh, Wrexham, Barrow, and Bradford. I said five, and we have got four. Um, oh, so, so I'm two points away. I think. Yeah, but. <laughs> You, you've overshot though. You can't win. You've over, already gone too far. Things things can only get worse for you. Um, <laughs> things can only get better. They played that yesterday. Mm-hmm. So how many points, Sam? How many points do you think we're going to get? From next two games. And if we I don't get those, what are you going to do as a forfeit? Because that's I'm going to stick my head out. I'm going to say we're going to get four points for the next two games. We're going to get a point at Barrow. Oh. I've, had a drop, I've not had a drop of drink today, so it's not, that's nothing about that. And... Um, and uh, and I think we're going to end the 27-year wait for a victory against Bradford. That'd be nice. I, they're they're be in all sorts of trouble, aren't they? All but then I'm weary trouble. about that because now I'm thinking, you know, they're, they're, they're a, a big-sized team um, and they've got a bit of quality in there. And I'm you leave about, Andy I'll... Cook's weight out of it. <laughs> I'm not being fattest. You're fattest. They've lost four um, in a row. Yeah, but then I start thinking, well, lost... it's got, you know... It can't carry on. They're going to win. They lost three 0 to Notts County, and they lost two 0 to Forest Green. Yeah, and how often do they then come to Blundell Park? Any other team? We've seen it for years and years on the back of a run, and then they come to Blundell Park and play themselves into form. I tell you something. After twenty, after twenty-seven years and whatever, how many games it is in that time? It's would you to beat them? Surely, surely. I tell you something. I hope they win. If you're a Bradford fan, when that fixture came out, you were rubbing your hands together. Bank Holiday Monday, Cleethorpe's in April. Oh, they must have been apps, you know, Thorpe Park. My, I'm surprised you've got a place. Um, you know, that I was, use my Yorkshire you know, card. Yeah, you and everybody else. And I'll tell you something again, Sam. Watch was it which you wouldn't have got if you watched it on the telly. Half time, we're three nil down. Let's, you know, try and get the fans back on. The music, was it Enya? I have. It was like Morris. The Smiths was on. It was just like heaven knows I'm miserable now. It's like, well, come on, let's we were, get the place. We were, weren't we? Reflected. Yeah, but boom. you're not but meant to win. be that. You're meant to do a little bit more. <laughs> and um, their way to heaven. But, but, and Matt well, says, but, "Is it? Well, then is any?" Then they'd say, but then you'd say, "Sorry, if you're no, kind of no. trying to be argumentative or disagreeable." You just kind of say, "Oh, why are they putting this happy music on when we're three 0 down?" And they don't, they moan about that as well. The club can't win. I got to say, oh, I, I was, I was, I was disappointed in the fans yesterday. I thought it was quite. I thought it was right, quite, okay. I'll, I'll play. I'll, I'll, quite I'll play. I'll play Bruce because I read the. Um, I read the messages, and I can kind of play. I can leave what I'm And I sat on the this. fence. Here we've we lost. We've won sixteen games out of the last sixty-six home games in the comp in the um, in, in League Two. In League Two, twenty-four point six percent. 
we've been I cannot remember a decent home season for years. Why what, what, what on earth is there to be cheerful about? Do fans not have a right to kind of groan and just think, oh bloody hell, here we go again. Why the hell am I doing this every week? People who spend you, hard earned money in a season you, ticket. Do you think it's any different to seasons in the championship where we were finishing eighteenth, nineteenth, twenty whatever? Because that was in the championship. This is in League yeah, Two. But no <laughs> one had a clue about that. That's the same thing, isn't it? You know, Scunthorpe will be saying exactly the same thing about us now. At least we're playing league football. I just think it does play something and it is different. And our away percentage can't be any better than that, surely. Um, I'll give I'll give my take. It's bizarre, isn't it, that in the last three years or whatever it is, we've changed owners, we've changed managers, we've changed players, we've improved everything around the club. And yet the one thing that remains are the fans, and yet we're still effectively the same position. What what I would say I, I, is, I is I, you are you are able to do that. There is 90 minutes out of an entire week where it's probably best just not to. So that there is there is six six days, twenty what, twenty two and a half hours other that you can do that. Yesterday we were six games undefeated going up against Which one, the Wrexham Matt? team. We were six six games undefeated. So you're going to Blundell Park, and this isn't a lot of people. Don't get me wrong; I'm not having to dig at a lot of people. You know that fans go to the game, they pay their ad or earn money, they go every week more than me. So you know they're view and opinion, but there's there's a small section I think that it's it's wow. the it's the hit it long, isn't it? You know they, they shout for you to hit it long, and then as soon as you hit it long, they're like not like that. Keep the ball. There, there is a section of that because you can hear them behind Tonda, and it's um, there's it's an just... issue because. Lots and lots of managers have mentioned this without without going into full detail. Every manager we've had over the last few years has mentioned it, and I tell the same about how it can be easy to come there and play. And I think that's what they talk about as a section of fans. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I you just, six six games. On I the just, team, you I just, them off at half time. I, I have to, I have to worry. I, how how sure? Uh, that wasn't. Can... But hang on, I'll, 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 that wasn't many people. But it was the. There was quite a lot of people moaning with frustration, and it just—I don't see that at away games, and it's no better. Um, and again, it's just another advocation for an area in which we can try and create an atmosphere, and I think we have to do that in some form or other. And we've already discussed how we do it, in my opinion, um, because again, Blunder Park was apparently sold out yesterday. What was the attendance? Seven seven. Seven. seven seven it's not big enough it's just not big enough and um, Sorry, by the way yeah. it was four thousand more than were there to watch us beat wimbledon six three in the second tier during six, the great two. escape six two sorry during the great escape in 2002 so it was the do you know what? it's the first time that was that two town players had scored a hat trick since 1966 and for me that was the omen to for the reason why we were going to win the world cup that year <laughs> where were you where were you where were you when we were good i'm going to get it on a t-shirt it's true where were we when we were good we're the opposite we've of been... the rexhams and the like and can i just show you this because matt matt woods is getting annoyed so i'm going to stop it sam has filled up this question let's all make another point before we, we before we do it because it'll annoy him even more okay do it then uh, Martin Weeks in the chat just says just win at home. That's that's very true, Martin. But we, we had just won the last two, is sort of my point. But I do understand over the long term, there's not been a lot for us to for us to watch at home. I just I just do struggle with off the back of a good win, a very small again a very small element of of, of people there just moaning. I tell you something though, that aside, a sellout, and we are what you know. What I'm trying 92nd, 91st, 89th in the English Football League, and we're oh, selling bonkers. out at home. You you it's think bonkers. of what a you know a powder keg this town could be if the t if they if the fans get the team they deserve, and you know we just have a little bit of success. You imagine how the fans would have reacted now to a play like Michael Reddy, and the you know him you know running past everybody from sixty yards from goal and skipping it around the keeper. That sort of thing. I, it's going to come, and I trust Jason. I trust Andrew. And I trust the team to do do right by us, and then I've learned quite a lot from this year. And when we do, it's going to be. I don't know what you're going to do. We're going to have to play our games at Hull or something like that because that's the only way we're getting everybody in. 
That's the frustrating thing. You said it last week and you're bang on the money, mate. We've got such an incredible fan base, which are just dying out, just dying out for a team to get behind. You know, we haven't had it. We, we, we've had it at times, but not long enough to sustain, you know, talking a couple of seasons to build momentum. And as soon as, if we can ever get that, the momentum that the fans will be able to create to get behind that, because they're just begging for that team to get behind. You know, and full credit, we're selling 7,500, you know, and we're, we're playing with, with a fourth fourth worst team in the entire football league. It's it's incredible. It really is. Simon Hodgson says Bradford only look like they're going to be selling half of their allocation. So we should just stick them in the corner, you know, where they belong. If they're not going to sell out I'm, for their cup final, then what's the point? Anyway, I round them up on the fitties. Re- re- rebuilding the main stand, or I think Matt might explode in the comments. <laughs> right. It's so, quite, I think can, I, can, I, can I just say something? I'm going to take us all out of this. What I want you to look at, you know, the boards, the sponsor boards that are above the main stand. And for those of you who are listening by audio only, come join us on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook join on eight o'clock on a Sunday where you can watch this stuff. I want you to be able to see, in fact, you can see it here where the Young's logo, they've obviously just flicked the Young sponsorship boards around. Um, let me take everybody down and I'll remove you. Let, let's do this. This is not good. This is just me. It's going to click back any. You can see it, can't you? You can just see they've obviously flipped it around. And I don't know what you do. I, You know, there's a couple of carpenters who are town fans. Can we not do something with the back of the main stand and just paint it or wrap it in something like a cotton thing that, you know, has Grimsby Town on it? Or, but, you know, like Arsenal have got where they're all players are linking arms and stuff behind it. Just have, you know, Groves and whatever. On the back of those advertising boards? No, on the back of the wood at the main stand there. Can we not have that? Should we do Matt's point? Because I think he has actually lost it because he's gone quiet now. Well, Matt just said, uh, anyone else watching the background go around and thinking about how to rebuild the main stand? My thought process would be you have got a couple of metres either side of the main stand and the and the Findus. You push the pitch closer to the Findus and you have to build a stand which doesn't uh, need you to walk along the front of the pitch uh to get out and get in um and i reckon you could probably get something like i try to work it out on google maps because i'm sad and i think you know chel not the chesterfield big stand but the other one you could probably fit that in there but it only gives you an extra thousand and a half seats it's not it's not a groundbreaker it's not you know so maybe you just build a build something that goes around the side of it and isn't the kind of economic value of so what it would cost to demolish the main stand, rebuild a main stand that goes all the way across the uh, mm. across the um, the pitch, and also the revenue you lose for the season, the presume the season, um, the season when you have to rebuild it, is it kind of? I don't see how that's economically viable. And where do you put well, all you... the us who sit in the main stand? Because the people listening to this who sit in the main stand are going, well, I don't, don't want to lose my seat for a season. What's that all about? Oh. Are you going to put like? Where are you going to put? It's where not, are you going to sit? It's not. I've, I've, I mean, I've got many places to, it, to suggest. <laughs> if you wanted to do it, there's loads of loads of houses you could buy up. But then you back to Sam's point about economic viability. You know, I, so I know there the are. Have, you'd have to buy eleven have, houses behind it. That's what I worked out. Well, the owner, the owners haven't talked much about a new stadium. I, I get the feeling that that's very much about they want to get the training ground built because that's where the players play all their you know spend all their time and try and get as upper division you know before they do that. I would think, I would be amazed if it's not high up on their radar, though. They just don't want to fall into the Fenty trap of talking about it for 20 years and it never happening. Yeah. So I I, Where do you... I don't think they're ever going to spend that sort of money because if you're going to do it for four or five years, it just doesn't make sense. You know, you can fill those corners in. I, I'm going to say cheaply, but it's relatively cheaply compared to building a... Are building we buying that Cleethorpe's Town stand? stand? That they they promoted. They, no, got just not that police box over. Not that police box over and fill that corner in. Um, and fill the fill the fill the other pontoon corner in. Oh, that like that lad, you thousand something like that, eight hundred something like that. I'd imagine. Yeah. But what what's that gonna? But where do you put the where do you put the training rooms for a year? Do you build a, a put some porter cabins where the where no one's no one's no one's, rooms? no one's not. He was just talking about filling in the corners, which everyone suggests. Yeah. You'd actually. The players get changed in the, the open corners. I must have missed that. 
paradoxically, you probably improve the view from the because in my seat, there's a kind of like the the court, the, the sort of pontoon main stand corner is like the corner of uncertainty. I've never seen a corner go in. I've never seen a player take a corner from that in nearly eighteen years of sitting there. I think it's very much a just just make do and improve as we can until they do go down the route of getting a new staging. Because when you look at what they want to achieve, they want to achieve progression and what have you, and probably bring. I always think their plan is to get us up a division or two and then then bring in bigger investors that are going to take us the next step. Um, but once you've got up, if, if we got into League One and we've got a new training ground, then that's sort of where you would start maybe being able to attract the sort of money to do it. Because it's also 20 million quid for a new stadium, you know, so it's not small. It's, it's, small it's change, more than it? that now, isn't it? More than that, probably now with inflation and what have you. Yeah, Alistair Bowser says, give. Gives the pon- give the pontoon to away supporters and then use the Osman for home fans. Fill the main corner main corner by using safe standing as fan zone under a temporary corner. That way you have a, a huge wraparound. I, I would be happy to give the pontoon up as a family stand because it's effectively that now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's separate from everywhere, isn't it? And I'm sure they look into it. But could you imagine that, you know, giving the pontoon to the away fans? Um, that would, you know, that would... I mean, we added a, they added a flag to the badge. What would, uh, Hannah say? what would Hannah say to that though? Hannah wouldn't move. She'd still be sat there with a load of Bradford City fans. <laughs> I tell you what you want to do with the way fans though, is you want to give them the first two, the, the, the last two blocks in the in the main stand heading towards the Osmond in that corner bit and take, just put them completely in the corner, separate the two bits and give us, we lose a bit of the main stand, give the disabled supporters a decent vantage point somewhere uh, and then we get behind both goals. And stop letting cars just park in the ground and use it to fill people in with seats instead. Bruce is here. We're still talking about car parks. Yeah, and there we go. The I think we do... Oh, yeah, Sam's got on one last thing. Bruce, and on the subject of Bruce, he'll probably want us to raise it. Stop thanking the away fans for coming. Oh, I'm glad they came. I hope they had a nice day. <laughs> too great if just one nice week, day. one week, he said, you've got your three points, now fuck off home. The problem is, is doesn't Bruce isn't Bruce friends friends with the guy who does the announcements? So could he not Bruce have the power? To... That's true. Um, but there you go. Um, and Martin's going. And where do I sit then, Martin? We'll find you a seat. Don't you worry. We can, you know, we'll find you a seat somewhere. You'd be fine. Would you know? Let's have a bit of a rejig. Wake everybody up a bit. You know, move everyone about. Have a bit of a laugh. Um, it will go down well and everyone will be happy with it. It'll be fine. Um, and that's it, isn't it? Bradford to come. Barrow to come. Sam's impending food poisoning to come as he walls to, goes into Weatherspoons. Are you going to try and get a free meal out of them? Uh, no, no. I'm, I'm, my auntie's doing a pack up. But we're taking precautions. <laughs> what are you, what's going in the pack? Okay, I've got two questions actually. Mike. Are you getting like yeah. an entertainment pass at um at the fitties at Thorpe Park? Can you get an entertainment pass? Can you not get an entertainment pass where you know they do you all can, the shows and stuff? Yeah, but I don't need to go and some spotty use... kid who usually works at Grimsby College. No, I, I, I come up to Grimsby and Cleethorpes because I like Grimsby and Cleethorpes, not Thorpe Park. So I'll be I'll be spending very little time in Thorpe Park. And then Sam, what goes in the pack up? That's a very good question. Vancy Vic Does she cut the crust off for you? Vancy Vic will go he to want curly Marks, air. Marks and Spencer's food hall this week and she will a select a Of course array. she goes to Marks and Spencer's. Of course she does. I do like their food, though. I do like their empanadas. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. Could you, all, could you send us a picture of your pack-up, by the way? Yeah, you got to do that. And this is a new thing. I think we want. We were asking for people's rituals last week and I think Sam's now is to have to take a picture of his pack-up. And Andrew Nair says, for fuck's sake, Sam, don't go to Spoons. <laughs> in the front. When Vic's sitting in the front of the car on the way back, passing food back to me, I'll sort of live stream it to the end of the pod chat. You're such a fucking child, Sam. We had, um, oh yeah, I was just trying to think, what did we have in the car on the Sorry, way home? One, one week you said I was born 35, now you said I'm a child. Make your mind up. You're just no, you were child... born, th- born 35, but you, you're still a child. <laughs> And there we have our episode. Thank you all so much for listening to us. Do you know what? I think we should do a space at some point. Easter is going to be a bit mixed up. Are we going to do one on Easter Sunday? I don't know. It depends on how many Easter eggs I have to eat or how I feel after eating so many Easter eggs. Um, we don't know. Uh, we might do a Twitter space as well. I don't know if you guys are up for that. Um, get everybody's thoughts yeah. and opinions. Yeah, I mean, I'm not I'm not around. I mean, 
we've talked about it slowly, but I'm not around until after Harrogate, I think, because I don't have an internet connection up there. So, oh, what are we doing then? Are we can we not just find someone? Can you not just go around to Bruce's house and do it there? I'll go around to Bruce's house. You can pick up Sam's boxes. Oh, I'll, I'll use my phone, me 4G. I'd max it out. There we go. Or you can go around my old man's and use his. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. Um, those prints, if you like them, we'll put them up on the uh, podcast thing, uh, on the podcast Etsy shop. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining us. Hope you had a great weekend. Um, and you've all got to go back to work now. I'm really sorry. Uh, but there we go. See you next week. Open wide for some soccer. And now the shipping forecast issued by the Met Office on behalf of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency at 1130. Go! At 1130. I don't think I've ever wanted to be on a stand more than my life around there. They're going crazy. Gee, they got fancy here. They've been fish flying about that. There's no tomorrow. What a magnificent piece of football! A really, really good job. You can't make the strength of that.